pyramid um, is looking to produce a, um, a near real time flood risk assessment demonstrator um, for Newcastle upon Tyne, which will bring together um, new data sources as well as existing data sources. Um, and in particular, um, we're going to use the City of Newcastle on its wider Tyne catchment, um, and we're also going to demonstrate that there's potential, the potential for other areas. Um, we're going to use a um, sort of citizen science and community-based approach to actually um, ensure that the tool we produce reflects their needs and concerns, and you can see how that will work in that diagram there. Um, this will involve creating um, a flood risk component data set. So that will include a whole load of existing data sets from the urban observatory that have been collected around the city, as well as some novel data from things like um, bin trucks, for example. Um, there's a whole load of information as well that we want to assimilate on things like floating debris from CCTV and things like that. So that will allow us to um, understand um, some of the problems with blocking and things like that in real time, potentially. This, all of this data gets assimilated into um, hydrological and hydrodynamic modeling. Um, and then there'll be a web platform that basically um, takes all of this modeling and data and produces uh, dynamic flood risk maps in near real time at the moment. But the idea would be that you could potentially use this type of system in real time in the future. So hi, I'm Liz Lewis from Newcastle University um, and I'm going to talk about the Pyramid Project, which is basically building a platform for dynamic hyper-resolution um, flood risk modelling. So with kind of flooding at the minute, the kind of uh, risk assessment and tools that we use to assess that are really static and they're based kind of just on the, the topography and um, infrastructure and buildings around. Um, when in reality, flood risk is quite dynamic. So uh, kind of a, a classic example is the Boscastle flooding, where um, there were a whole load of cars that got swept down the river and blocked a bridge and completely changed the outline um, of the, the flood um, the flood in Boscastle. Um, so what we're trying to do is stream all of this kind of additional dynamic information and feed it into a central modeling tool, which is a hydrological model linked to a, a hyper-resolution um, hydrodynamic model, um, which can model things like debris and uh, open and closed floodgates and things like that um, to really capture the, the changing and evolving flood risk um, in flooding scenarios. Um, so there are a whole load of different data streams that are going to feed into our uh, central modeling tool. Um, some of them are going to be kind of using uh, artificial intelligence to um, extract features to create a kind of a detailed local floodscape. So for example, we've got kind of um, sensors and cameras on the back of um, uh, bin lorries that can uh, create a 3D um, uh, kind of visualization of the area that will feed into the modeling tools, um, but also working with um, citizens and communities to um, use their uh, local knowledge and citizen science uh, sensors and things like that to also feed into our modeling tool as well. Um, as also, we're going to be obviously using a lot of kind of the national uh, data sets available and um, leveraging all of the Environment Agency kind of rainfall and um, uh, meteorological data as well. So it's kind of bringing together these existing tools and methodologies for extracting all of this um, flood relevant data and uh, putting it into one big uh, platform and making sure that we're co-developing this platform with our stakeholders and people who are interested in flood risk to make sure that it's giving them um, appropriate information. <laughs> 